as we take you into the throne room of God's healing. The Bible says in the book of James chapter 1 verse 17, the Bible says every good and perfect gift is from God. Every good and perfect gift is from God. We can't go further without letting you to know that men are born with talents. God gives gift. We are born with talent. Your talent tells you what you are born to do. Some of us, we are born with the talent of becoming mechanics. Some of us are born with the talent of becoming hairdressers. Some of us, we are born with a physical talent in us. When you associate yourself with God, he gives you a gift. Then the Bible says that a man's gift will bring him before great people. But in this scripture, it's speaking about something else. This scripture is speaking about something that is born of God. Anytime a man, anytime a person have an encounter with God, such as leaving your house to come into a place as this, in the idea and the desire of seeking God and looking for God, God have an encounter with you and the encounter God have with you, that encounter produces. In other words, God give birth to your mind, which means that anytime you wait on God or anytime you wait for God or wait in God or read the word, something is birthed out of that waiting. Nobody can go to the Father unless you have a relationship with God. And anytime we build a relationship with God, God give us a revelation as a result of the relationship we have with him. Am I speaking to somebody? So what you have to do is that anytime you have any encounter, any time, any moment with God, you must expect that God will drop a word in your heart. You must expect that God will give you an idea. That idea can be a physical idea. It can pertain to the work of God. It can pertain to something that you feel like doing. And anytime God gives you that thing, anytime it releases into your spirit, it's always bigger than what you imagine. It's always bigger than your finances every physical thing around you will tell you that this is impossible everything around you will begin to fight it God's dream is big because God is big because it's coming from God sometimes it could even break your courage and your faith in God imagine at this level God tells you that I'm going to give you I'm going to give you a mountain you are not working you have nobody connected to there is no rich man in your house and you are asking yourself how can I have a mountain at this stage of my life when I'm not even working when I have no savings together but God doesn't need a person to give you what he has said he will give to you why because God gives to you as a result of a revelation and the revelation cannot come until you have a relationship relationship with God. God does not give vision to everybody. Everybody wakes up in the morning. There are people who are just roaming about. They have nothing to do in life. But the fact that you have a relationship with God, you must expect a revelation. Because it is a revelation that God builds on. That is why he didn't build on upon any of the disciples. He built upon only Peter and said, Peter, upon this I will build my church. So if there is no foundation of a revelation, there is no manifestation of the glory. In other words, whatever you desire to do, build your relationship with God. If you build a relationship with God, you find out to know that anytime you build a relationship with God, there will be a storm. People will try to pull you away from God. They will try to pull your love from God. Because anything that is born of God automatically attracts attacks. When something is born of God, it will attract an attack. When you are doing something for God, when you are, you are worshiping, you are praying, something that is born of God automatically will attract an attack. So the first thing that you do is that when anything is born of God, you must always hold the relationship of God. Number two, never fall in love with what God has given to you to do. Keep everything based on the relationship you have with God. Now, I'm preaching on what I've entitled, provoking divine wealth. Provoking divine wealth. You are provoking divine wealth. The wealth that is of God. The wealth that will change your world. The wealth that will give you what it takes. The first thing is that when you fall in love with God, God gives you a revelation. As a result of the revelation, there is a physical gift, a physical manifestation. 
As a result of the physical manifestation, if you are not careful, the physical things God gives to you can take your time away from God. And any time a relationship has no communication, any time a relationship has no, uh, has no contact, any time a relationship has no, has no communication, the relationship begins to die. That is why people spend time thinking about how to make life. They spend time thinking about how to get restoration without thinking about how to get a, re a re relationship with God. Because nothing gets restored to you. So long as you are in the flesh, everything is fighting you. But when you are in a relationship with God, every sin will come back to you because it takes only one voice of God when God command that which is not it will come as though it is but the first thing the devil do is that he will steal your mind he will make you focus on the work you are doing majority of us have become victims that we were looking for job we come we came to the church pray 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 we seek the face of God the moment the job came it kept us it kept us busy from the relationship of God The hour has come. The set time for liberation is here. Experience the power of God. Join thousands in worship. Every Tuesday, impartation service at 7 p.m. Thursday, Financial Breakthrough Service at 10 a.m. Friday, All Night Service at 10 p.m. And Miracle Sunday Services. First service at 9 a.m. Second at 11 a.m. And a Prophetic Healing Service at 5 p.m. For more information, call 1-800-807-7617 or visit MiracleArena.ca Miracle Arena for All Nations. Revolutionizing the world for Jesus. Visit us for 24 hours of miracles at the Toronto Night of Miracles with your host, Prophet Kofi Donso, and guest pastor, Matthew Ashimolowo. Principalities and powers of the air, but then God said he has raised us far above principalities. The event will be held on September 20th to 23rd at 20 Milvin Drive off Finch and Weston. For more information, call 1-800-807-7617. My name is Patrice Charles and I'm from the island of Trinidad and Tobago. I truly have to thank God for bringing me into the ministry of Miracle Arena for All Nations as it has impacted my life. The biblical teachings of Prophet Kofi Danso and Reverend Joanne Danso have transformed me spiritually and renewed my mind in the Word of God. I have personally experienced countless miracles and witnessed countless miracles. And in this service, the man of God prophesied that there was a woman in the hospital battling for her life and her phone number. We were able to contact the woman via video conferencing. And through prayer and prophetic word, she immediately received her healing and got up out of the hospital bed and walked to the glory of God. Truly, the Holy Spirit is moving in this ministry. And I don't want you to miss the opportunity to be a part of our Miracle Arena family and receive your testimony. So join us here at 20 Milvin Drive and watch us on Livestream.com today and receive your miracle. And God does not give you what you are looking for based on who you look or how you look or what you do. God gives to you based on his relationship. As home and God was looking at Abraham and Abraham has no time for him anymore. Abraham was walking up and down. He doesn't have time for God anymore. Every time with his only son Isaac, God wake up in the morning and say, Abraham, give me your only son. I need him. That thing that has occupied your time. Majority of us are here. It's not that God doesn't want to hear you, but you have not learned a deep lesson that the reason why God took that relationship is because I focus on physical relationship than the relationship of God. That is our problem. Please, every foundation is important. Your foundation to break through, to attract or provoke a divine wealth is a relationship with God. Listen to me. There is no beauty 
in any physical thing. Beauty is a result of the presence of God. The beauty of this church is not the man of God who preach. It's not the instrumentalist who play. It's not the singers who die. You see, they are not there and preaching. The beauty of every ministry depends on the worship and the presence of God. In a relationship, you have to consider your worship life. How many of us here are able to worship in their house? You worship before you pray. Before you pray. Prayer is easy for people to pray in their house. But how many of us have a worship life? You wake up in the morning. We give you glory, Lord, as we honor you. You sing that song for maybe 20 minutes or 30 minutes. Only worship. Cry. Let me see the hands of those people. Hey, see, we have a problem here now. Just, how many people pray? You When you wake up, ask for prayer. Ah, the devil even knows you. Let me see your hands. Good. So, you have to learn how to, how to, how to speak to God. How to worship God. The key is worship. Every relationship, adoration. What keeps the relationship going is adoration. The nice things you talk about your husband and your wife. The nice things. Say, you look beautiful. Even though he's not beautiful, you say, you look beautiful. Today I was watching something on, on Facebook. and An old man at the age of, I think, at the age of 80 and the wife at the age of 75 or something. And then the old man came to the place. They were living in separate um, uh, old homes and then they came to um, the man was coming he had a flower in the hands and then he came to the old wife and he gave the flower and told the wife to get up he himself cannot walk the wife cannot walk but he's telling the wife to get up and let's get hug and I was watching it and not that, as if that was not enough he looked at the wife and said you are so beautiful he said, he said, you are my only wife that have no wrinkles. At the age of 80, look at the way wrinkles have spread over. But the man says, you are my only wife that has no wrinkles. And he has changed the life of this woman. At this moment, it doesn't matter what you, talk, you tell the woman. Somebody precious to her heart has changed her mood. And that's the way God wants us to be like. But as for you, for the first time God is blessing you, God is good. The moment things are going down... Ah, this thing. I think the anointing of the church has dropped a little bit. <laughs> the prayer, I don't think the people who are praying with us, they are not sensitive. They have to know that we are. <laughs> but in every condition, your relationship does not regulate the way you praise your maker. In every condition, your relationship does not, because of relationship, your suffering does not regulate your worship to your king. Your worship to your king. Can I tell you this? You don't have to struggle. And the reason why most of us we struggle is because we don't do the things that God asks us to do appropriately. That's number one. We don't pray well. We don't worship well. In our mind, every time it's take, take from God, take from God. But if you have a mind of give to God, I have to worship him. I have to thank him for my life. You will see that changes are coming. You see that your life is transforming. Do you know that elephants do not have to struggle and pray to God to give birth to a little elephant? And do you know that a little elephant is stronger and bigger than a lion? A little elephant. When they give birth to the elephant, the elephant is bigger than a lion. Because elephant is a giant. So anything that a giant produces is a giant. You must not produce little because you, the one that gave birth to you is a giant. You are born again. So anything that you give birth must gain power. You don't have to, listen, it is an error to pray to become rich. It's an error to pray to become, Father, make me rich. Oh, make me rich. No, check in the Bible. How many people you saw that they were praying that God should make them rich? God have to come and initiate the riches to them and say, hey, uh, Solomon, I will add riches. Because you must know that if your father is rich and you are born, you are born rich. You don't have to pray to become rich. You are automatically born rich. The Bible says, whatever is born of God overcometh this world. Another word for overcoming is conquer, conquer this world. Whatever is born of God. You put your idea in your palm and the idea go around and conquer people's idea. Check the same thing that happened to the life of Moses and then the magicians. Moses brought snake. Magicians also brought snake. 
Both of the snakes were on the floor. And the Bible says that even the snake of Pharaoh was bigger than Moses' own. But one snake swallowed other snake. That means that whatever is born of God can swallow anything and everything in town. He said every time he twisted his upper body, he felt the pain. Very excruciating, nasty pain in the night. He could hardly sleep. Visit us for 24 hours of miracles at the Toronto Night of Miracles with your host, Prophet Kofi Donso, and guest pastor, Matthew Ashibolowo. Principalities and powers of the air, but then God said he has raised us far above principalities. The event will be held on September 20th to 23rd at 20 Milvin Drive off Finch and Weston. For more information, call 1-800-807-7617. The hour has come. The set time for liberation is here. Experience the power of God. Join thousands in worship. Every Tuesday, impartation service at 7 p.m. Thursday, Financial Breakthrough Service at 10 a.m. Friday, All Night Service at 10 p.m. And Miracle Sunday Services. First service at 9 a.m. Second at 11 a.m. And a Prophetic Healing Service at 5 p.m. For more information, call 1-800-807-7617 or visit MiracleArena.ca Miracle Arena for All Nations. Revolutionizing the world for Jesus. Man of God, for over one year, this man had been suffering with pain in his back. He said every time he twists his upper body, he felt the pain. However, after prayer, he can now twist his upper body and there is no more pain. For how many? Over one year. Over one year? You couldn't turn yourself. Do it, let me see. Oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. Come on, lift your voice. Yes, prophet, another healing has taken place. For over 12 years, this woman was suffering from serious abdominal pain and back pain. In fact, she just came out of the hospital. She had surgery for her colon, but the pain was still there. But tonight you prayed for her, and she said the pain is gone. Healed in the name of Jesus. Over 12 years, over 12, years. 12 solid years. Jesus is amazing. Come on, lift up your hands and sing it. Total healing. Can we worship? Prophet, the Lord has done it again tonight. Another healing. Three years ago, this man suffered a serious car accident. Right after that, he said he was having very excruciating, nasty pain in the night. He could hardly sleep, sleepless night. He said he went to the doctor, they did an the MRI, they said you have a pinched nerve. But he came to America Arena, you laid hands on him, he said the pain is totally gone. Three! Three years. He's sleeping now in the night. He's sleeping now before he can hardly sleep, just turning and tossing with that excruciating pain. He said he has seen a, a total change in his life since he's been coming to this ministry. You know, I saw... I saw this man when he came to me in the office and I was praying for him and I, 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 I felt for him because when he was speaking, describing the pain, he was not just talking about the pain. You could feel that he is in a serious pain. And I thank God that the God who called me never denied me. I'm excited about your healing. Let me pray with you. Lift up your hands. Online, somebody's being healed. Partial stroke. Somebody being healed. Partial stroke online. And I saw somebody also, your eye, you couldn't see without that glasses. The Lord just healed you. I want you to examine yourself now. There is a lady who have been having this problem. Um, they want to do a surgery on you. Now see as the Lord has said, I have already taken that pain away. And that thing that looked like a stone in your stomach, your lower abdomen area, that stone is coming out. 
I need a testimony now. I pray for you that your healing will be sealed in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Are you hearing me? Our ministry, our ministry, it has swallowed other ministries. Are you hearing me? Because we are born. What you are seeing here is not Kofi Danzu's idea. What you are seeing here is a birth. It's something that God gave birth to. So even though if I don't do anything, that thing that God has given birth will do something. First of all, you have to we have to relate yourself to the relationship of God until you get yourself there. You don't get that breakthrough. Lift your hands and say, Lord, help me. I can't hear you. What you need is to establish a relationship with God. That is what God is looking for. In this fasting, do not fast based on, well, I want God to give me. No. God has already, the Bible says you are blessed with all spiritual blessings. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 5. You are blessed with all what? Spiritual blessings. First Peter chapter 2. The Bible said, First Peter chapter 1 and 4 going. The Bible said, it said, for he has given you all things that pertain to life. Godliness. He has given you all things. That means you cannot be a beggar. You are a candidate and an agent of blessing. You are a life changer. When you get to a place, people must look at you and say, ah, for this one, I wish my life is like them. Because whatever is born of God overcometh the world. And how does something get born out of God? By relationship. When you have a, when you have a relationship with God, God is interested in intimacy. He always come closer to his people, wrap himself around them, and he sing and smile over them. So anytime you have a relationship with God, you will find out to know that the most difficult thing you cannot solve at midnight, at afternoon hours, when you are all by yourself, you see that something comes into your mind. He said, this is the way out of this problem. You don't know what that thing is. We call it something. It is the Holy Ghost. It is a relationship of God that has given you the idea to become greater. Anything that is born of God, what is the born of God? Your lifestyle alone, your lifestyle alone can conquer the enemy. The Bible says, even your faith, what is faith? By communication with God, by divine communication with God, we find out to know that faith only comes by hearing. How can you hear somebody you don't know? You can only hear the God you know. That means that God is speaking every day and faith is coming alive every day. That your situation you are facing, there is a specific word for that situation. There is a specific word. There is a rhema word. The now word that will change that your story. And until you are able to come to that level, you can't be free. Are you, are you hearing me? You see, seeing a pastor is consulting the pastor. But having a dialogue with God is taking your birthright, your responsibility from God. And that is what everybody has to learn to do. I come to God myself. I love the word of David in Psalm 3. He said, I cry unto God with my own voice. And the Lord heard me. With my own voice. And the Lord heard me. With my, not somebody's voice. With my own voice. Because I have a relationship with God. How many of us have a deep relationship with God? Now, you can't say that you have a relationship with God because that relationship of God, having with God, is great. It conquers sin. It makes you forgive people. Hey, have you got to a place that somebody did something to you, but you said, I'm looking at that, my friend. If not that, my friend, what would I have done to you? Eh? That, that, my friend, that's why I don't want to say anything. Because of my husband. Because of my husband, I will not say anything to you. Because of my wife, because of my pastor, because of that, I will not say anything. I will leave you. I'm giving you this thing because of this person. I don't know you, but I'm giving it to you. And why? Because there is a relationship. Somebody say relationship. Now let me tell you something. This morning must be one of your greatest morning service that will change your life, that will bring you to a place of divine favor, that you receive what you are looking for. Am I speaking to somebody? If you are the one, lift the voice like it's yours and shout amen. amen. Relationship with God. Having a relationship with God. How do you build a relationship with God? By the word. You have to build a relationship by the word. Depend on this word. 
The Bible says, we desire a sincere milk that we may grow thereby. So you have to desire the word. Feed yourself with the word. Are you hearing me? Feed yourself with what? The word. Do you know, as I'm speaking to you, I always say it. I've not slept to feed myself with the word. Feed myself with the word. I chew this word like food. I read them. I'm a student when I'm in my house. I'm a prophet when I'm out of the house. I'm a student when I'm in the house. I'm a prophet when I'm out of the house. I read. I read. I write. I'm writing about four books at the same time. Four books at the same time. On dreams, on curses, on that at the same time. But this person who is reading has not been in school. I've not been in school yet. I'm not, I'm, 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 the way I'm writing my book is only God who knows the, how I'm writing it. Hmm. But I desire it so it gives me the spirit of learning. You have to desire something for God to give to you. And ladies and gentlemen, to build a relationship with God, you must know, the number two thing you must know, apart from feeding on the word, the next thing you must know, dwell in the presence of God. Dwell in the presence of God. If you want something to be born out of you that will overcome the world, that will change life, you must be the presence dweller. You must dwell in the presence daily, continually. The Bible says that he that dwelleth in the presence of the Most High God shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. You see, when, you see there are things that are hitting people and bringing people down. But there are some people who can never go down. Those people are not visitors. They are dwellers. Are you hearing me? When you dwell too much under the presence of God, you find something about God, that God is not a suffering God. God is a sovereign. God is not a suffering God. He is a sovereign God. But if you visit God, you think God is a suffering God. You think God, well, I came to church today. I didn't get the miracle because God is still going to borrow. No. God already has everything there. But it doesn't give to everybody. If God gives to everybody, then nobody will need God. Yeah, God gives to his children. 